Here is the quickest way to install Ethereum's Privileged Access Management, otherwise known as PAM. So we'll start off by uh, deploying a new OVF template. We're going to upload a local file. And then we're going to follow the um, Set the license. And then click finish. And then we wait for that to deploy. After we have deployed the OVF template, as you can see here, we're going to start up the machine by clicking the power on button and wait for that to start up. A few moments later. And then we should be greeted with the blue screen to begin setting up our PAM server. So we'll click OK. And then we'll accept the EULA. And then we can start configuring our network. So we want to enter our IP address. And then our net mask. And then our gateway and our primary DNS. And then it will take us to the um, restore screen. So this is where we can choose to either continue installing PAM without a backup, or if we already have a backup, we can upload this now. As this is a fresh install, we can just continue without restoring the backup. And then we're going to enter a host name. Um, this can be anything that you find appropriate. And then we will enter the fully qualified domain name or the IP address. In our case, we're just going to enter the IP address here. And then it will start to install PAM. Um, note this can vary in time based on your infrastructure speeds. We then get to the cluster setup screen. Um, here it gives us the option to join a cluster. In our case, as we said, it's a standalone PAM install, so we can just press continue without joining a cluster. And then you get to the master encryption keys. This is very important that we keep this safe as you may need to, well, you will need to use it again in the future um, for several different things. So we'll take a screenshot of this or a snippet of this and then proceed to the next screen. And then here on the next screen, we need to enter the master encryption key. So we'll just drag the um, snippet off to the side and take a side by side view of that. And then we can enter the encryption key. After we've installed PAM, we are ready to get started with setting up the admin UI. So we can navigate to a browser tab and paste in our IP address and hit enter. And then we'll be shown a screen with a certificate warning. So we can just bypass this and click proceed to the site. And then you're going to be met with a login screen so we're going to add our username um, which is super admin and then our password which we set up during the install process and hit enter this will just take us to the pam ui where we can see all the devices we have access to at the moment we haven't set up our user with any devices so all we can see is the http access to the pam um, browser, which then takes us to the admin UI if we open that. And then when we get to the admin UI, we'll then be presented with a um, place to upload our license. So we just click upload license and find the license file from our downloads folder. If you don't already have a license, please get in touch with us. Um, and then after we've installed, so after we've uploaded the license, then we can just click OK and 
the UI screen will get refreshed. We can then begin to set up our PAM. So we'll start with adding a new user. Um, you can see we've already got this primary super admin user. Um, this is just the just the admin account. If we then add a new user, so if we then click add new user, we can create a local user. Um, and here we're setting the auth type as local and we'll give them a password. And click save. And then you can see the new the new user is um, under the manage users tab. And then if we want to use this user, it's as simple as opening up another um, Chrome window, navigating to the IP address. using the local user's username and their password. And then we can see the devices that user has access to. At the moment, we haven't provisioned that user any devices yet, so they'll just see a blank um, screen here. So after we've added our user in, we can start setting up devices. So for this demo, I'm going to set up a universal SSH device. Um, and for this, I've already set up a Ubuntu Linux machine. So I'm going to be using that for this demo. So we can go to our devices page and click add new device. And when we add a new device, you can see there is lots of templates to use uh, to choose from here. So for this, demo as i was saying we'll use the universal ssh device this just creates an ssh connection to a linux device um, so we can add in our host name and our ip address and then click continue. And then we have to enter our username and password to access this device. So this account will need to be already added in to your Linux machine. And then it will carry out a connection test to, connect, uh, to test that it can make the SSH connection um, to the machine. And then after that, we come to the create device page um, where we can give the device a name. And here we have the control accounts to be set. So as you can see here, there's three types of control account. There's the fully managed, managed and the known. And as you can see here, the fully managed and managed are not supported by this template as it's just a universal SSH. Um, connection template it doesn't have the ability to update users on the device which is what the fully managed and the managed accounts will be doing so for this we will just set the control account to be known as you can see here and this will just use a known account on that device already and as we've already stated um, we we'll use the account that we've just entered in when we put in our connection details so then we'll click create And as you can see, that device is now added into our managed device page. So we've added our device in and we're going to need to now add a profile so that we can give the user access to that device. So we click on the profiles page and then add a new profile in. And we can give that profile a name. So let's call that SSH. Um, when you're setting up a profile, you have lots of different options because this is the quick install guide. We're just going to go through the 
basic options that the user needs to access this device. So now we have our profile, we can add devices to it. So we click add devices here. And you can see that we've got the option to add that device we've just created. And for this, we're going to use access level account. After we've added that device to the profile, we then need to add a tool to access that device. So we're going to access it via SSH, like so. And then finally, we're going to choose which user we want to access this device. So we'll use the local user that we created in this video. So now you can see this profile is set up. We can quickly check that the super admin cannot access that device as we've not given them the permissions to do that. But if we go on to our local users access page, we can see that device appears in the list. So if we click the device, then it will open in a new tab. And then we will have a terminal for that Linux machine. And then we can use it as, as a normal Linux machine. And when we're done with the session, we can click terminate the session. And that's how a user would access the device. So there it was, a quick guide to installing and configuring a Serium's privileged access management. If you need any more information, please get in touch.